This is this the witness trees that David worked with that Weyerhaeuser had cut down. They were up high on a hill. So the land dropping there one or two meters didn't affect their growing conditions. They were still above the salt. But the victims like this one with Bob Butler at University of Portland standing inside of it, they were they were down in the down down here in the low ground and so of course they they went for a swim and died. Now um, what David had done was to come up with dates for the outermost of the preserved rings. And you can see the problem with the trunk wood here as outermost preserved rings. There's the black here is, fo is, is charcoal that the elements haven't, hasn't, haven't flaked off, but from fires that had come through here and must have also uh, taken off wood from the outside. Um, there are also the marks of woodpeckers and there's salal and huckleberry and stuff growing on this tree. And so you, you don't know exactly when the tree died. All you can say is the tree died after the, um, the year of the final ring that you're able to date. But down, down in the roots, you have a chance of getting at, the, uh, getting at bark. And that takes you out into the sapwood like this, this, this root here. So um, this, is, this, this is the root of, a vic of an earthquake victim. And the final ring of that turns out to be from uh, 1699. Um, and so th those sorts of results came from these four southern Washington estuaries. They're the only ones that have these red cedar ghost forests, at least that I know of is having these red cedar ghost forests. So the only ones with the standing dead trees with the trunk wood that can be used by tree ring scientists to do this pattern matching game. And, um, and the, 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 the 1699 ring is a complete ring on these trees, um, saying that the trees live through the 1699 growing season, that is through, through uh, August or September of 1699. And then they were dead by the start of the 1700 growing season in May of 1700. So um, the Japanese tsunamis in, in January 1700. So um, you know you can never really prove things in science. You could, but you sure could have disproven it. You know what if what if the final ring was from 1697 or from 1705? Okay, then you would have gone back to the Japanese scientists and said you may still have an orphan. You know, uh, and or at least it didn't come from this central part of the Cascadia subduction zone, and it becomes difficult to make an earthquake big enough on just rupturing part of the the part of Cascadia south of the Columbia River or the part north of Copalis up into Canada. It becomes difficult to make to account for the flooding and damage in 1700 in Japan with such a piecemeal rupture, such a small rupture. So um, it's a pretty good fit and it gives confidence that that the Japanese uh, written records really do pertain to us and really help to guide our, our, our um, preparing our preparations for earthquakes and tsunamis that are in our future. <clears throat> so you get um, examples like this. Uh, with I think nearly every major coastal town in both Oregon and Washington have evacuation maps now that are that that start essentially with the premise of a magnitude nine earthquake. So in that sense, this is probably the most direct way that the the um, the detective story we've just looked at uh, cycles back into into preparedness in this region. Now you can contrast that as a as a final footnote here with the with the situation in Thailand, where signs like this, which were designed in Oregon, um, uh, not with the Thai part on them, of course, but um, they they sprouted up uh, in in the past two years, uh, in large part to encourage tourists to the, to come back to this stretch of coast and and. Um, and you know you wonder well had there had geologists been pouring over the coast of Thailand before the 2004 tsunami looking for signs of tsunamis in the recent geologic past 
could they have found them? If they had found them, would the Thai tourist injury, industry have welcomed the news? Probably not, you know. But, but in terms of could they have been found, that, that answer is probably affirmative. This, this uh, Thai scientist, um, uh, Kurwan Jankow, of, of, uh, she teaches at, at Chulalongkorn University uh, in Bangkok. And she's the leader of a, of a Thai group that uh, uncovered uh, deposits like these. So this, this, uh, this stuff here is the sand layer from the 2004 tsunami, which ran about 10 meters deep across this site. And, and the site was a marsh between some beach ridges, and this is the soil of that marsh. But that marsh had built up on top of the sand of a previous catastrophe. That was probably the predecessor, the, 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 the youngest ancestor to the 2004 uh, Indian Ocean tsunami. And that dates to um, sometime between, it's just like sometime between 1680 and 1720. No, it's, it dates to the, the um, decades between uh, 1310 and 1450. It's about 600 years ago. And then there are, there are two earlier ones that are, that are um, and, and down here is a timeline that's about 2,500 years ago. So you have um, several uh, sci evidence for, for several predecessors here to the 2004 tsunami. So had geologists gone out here before this sand layer was laid down and dug this pit, they probably could have anticipated a tsunami much in the way that it's been possible to do here in the Pacific Northwest. Thank you.